Hi, I'm Chris Fomesby. I'm the Senior Director of Discipleship at the United Methodist Church of the Resurrection, where I work with our children, youth, and adult discipleship teams across all of our campuses, as well as all of our online efforts to create environments, experiences, and events to help people become deeply committed Christians. I'm absolutely thrilled that you have chosen to join me for this Wesley Prayer Challenge. Many of you may remember the Wesley Challenge that we released a few years ago. This challenge, like the original Wesley Challenge, spans 21 days and provides three weeks of lessons for groups and classes of all sizes. This challenge has one simple primary goal in mind, to help guide you toward a closer walk with Christ. Recently, I bumped into one of many young families at the local baseball fields. My son was playing on the field immediately adjacent to the field that their two sons were playing on. Caught up in the moment of a play at the plate on the field my son was playing on, I moved quickly to my right to get a better view of the action. And when I moved to my right, I accidentally but literally bumped into the person standing next to me. I reached out my hands and quickly said, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. No problem, the person said with a smile on his face, <laughs> thankfully. As we made eye contact and we looked more carefully at one another, we realized we knew each other. We knew each other from church where our families typically attended the same worship service. After the initial pleasantries and baseball talk, we moved toward talking about our love for our church and our personal journeys of faith. After a few innings, this person said something like, you know, Chris, honestly, I haven't been feeling very close to Christ lately at all. Work is a struggle. Raising our children is a struggle. Aging parents in our home is a struggle. I'm trying to find ways for our kids to fit socially into our new neighborhood. He said, it's just been so overwhelming. And I just replied with something to the effect like, I've been there before. And while I would never pretend to have the exact same challenges as you, and while I never want to make it seem like the challenges that I've had are harder than yours, I can tell you, I've been there. His wife said, uh, what do you do then to stay connected to Christ during these challenging times? I said, well, I, I read my Bible daily, at least I try to. I spend a few minutes in prayer, usually three times a day around meals. And I have a few favorite prayers that I like to use to find strength, encouragement, support, and inspiration. We exchanged mobile numbers, and before I was home that day, I had received a text message asking if I could connect over coffee and if I'd be willing to share some of my favorite prayers. A few days later, outside on the patio of a local coffee shop, I shared the Wesley Covenant prayer with my new friend, and together we discussed its history, its profound meaning, its relevance to our daily walk with Christ, and its deep, rich, complex, and layered purposes. We said the prayer together, and off we went, challenging each other to take the next 21 days to pray the Wesley prayer. After the 21 days, we met up again to share our reflections, to share our discoveries, to talk about the relevance the prayer had to each of our lives. And we also talked about the absolute freedom we found in praying the prayer every day. The kind of freedom that opens your, your mind and your heart and your hands to be instruments of God's grace in the world. As we were departing our time together, he jokingly said, you know, you should write a book about the Wesley prayer. I smiled and said, actually I am. The Wesley Covenant prayer was adapted by John Wesley and was first used in 1755 at what we've come to know as the first ever covenant service. It has been said that approximately 1,800 people were in attendance at this covenant service. Wesley has been quoted as saying, Such a night I scarce ever saw before. Surely the fruit of it shall remain forever. The covenant service over the years has been modified, adjusted, and customized to meet the needs of congregations all over the world. The covenant service is often held at the beginning of a new year. Christians use the service as a time to renew our commitment to Christ. And while this resource is not meant to replace the covenant service in any way, it is explicitly meant to renew our commitment to Christ and to Christ's mission in the world. Hear the Wesley Covenant prayer now. If you know the prayer, feel free to say it with me. I am no longer my own, but thine. Put me to what thou wilt. Rank me with whom thou wilt. Put me to doing put me to suffering. Let me be employed by thee or laid aside by thee, exalted for thee or brought low for thee. Let me be full, let me be empty. Let me have all things, let me have nothing. 
I freely and heartily yield all things to thy pleasure and disposal. And now, O glorious and blessed God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, thou art mine, and I am thine. So be it. And the covenant which I have made on earth, let it be ratified in heaven. Amen. The next 21 days and the three weeks you gather together as a group, you're going to engage each one of the phrases in the prayer every day. That's the challenge. One phrase every day for 21 days. To help us all, I've taken the liberty of organizing the Wesley Covenant Prayer into three main sections. I've titled the first section, Surrender and Suffering. The second section, I've titled Honor and Humility. The third and final section, I have titled Community and Commitment. Each one of the sections is meant to provide us with a focus, a particular emphasis that I anticipate will help provide a framework for all of us to have a sustainable, lasting impact. For some of you, this challenge will take you deeper in your faith. For others, this challenge will be a starting point for an exploration of certain aspects of Christianity. And still, for others, this challenge will be a journal of sorts that provides a missional framework for engaging in thoughtful reflection generative discussion, and faithful participation in God's good work. Each day there's a passage of scripture to read, a short reflection, two to three questions meant for personal reflection, and several questions meant for group discussion. And there's a daily challenge to actively participate in God's work. There's also a departing prayer that's meant to leave an impression upon your heart. I have no doubt that daily engagement in this prayer for 21 days will shape your spiritual life and help you grow closer to Christ. For some of you, this prayer will be a chance for you to dive deep into your soul for self-examination. Others of you will find the prayer gives you a new set of eyes in which to see the world. Some of you will find that the prayer is very hard to pray, knowing that if it were to happen as you pray it, life could get extraordinarily difficult. I also believe that for many of you, you're going to find new reasons to celebrate what God is doing in your life and new ways to love and care for the people around you wherever you might live, work, study, or play. Without any doubt at all, I believe that this 21-day challenge will leave you feeling inspired, challenged, equipped, and hopeful. I pray a special peace over you as you bring yourself to God, open-handed, ready to learn and grow, ready to be transformed, all for deepening your commitment to Christ.